Jon Snow avenged the Red Wedding. He is the White Wolf, the King in the North. Sandor Clegane is telling Sansa that if she keeps Joffrey waiting, it will only be worse. As Sansa is making herself pretty for Joffrey, she wonders if Joffrey has heard about her meetings with Sir Dantos. As they are walking, Sansa asks the Hound what she has done, and is told that it is what her kingly brother, Rob Stark, has done. Sansa tells the Hound that Rob is the traitor, and she had no part. She can only think that if Rob has harmed Jaime Lannister, she will have to face Sir Ilim Payne. The Hound tells her again that they trained her well, calling her a little bird. She is led to the Lower Bailey, where a crowd has gathered. She can hear Lord Giles Rosbury coughing as they part to let her pass. Sir Horace Redwine and Hobber Redwine avoid her gaze as she passes. There is a cat shot by a bolt mewling on the ground. Sir Dantos, riding a broomstick as commanded by the king, whispers her to be brave. In the centre stands Joffrey with Sir Boris Blunt and Merrin Trant beside him. She kneels before him but Joffrey snaps that kneeling will not save her and she must answer for her brother's treasons. She is slow to get up and the hound, not ungently, pulls her up when commanded. Sir Lancel Lannister now speaks to her claiming that Rob fell upon Sir Stafford Lannister with an army of wargs near Lannisport using sorcery. Thousands of men were butchered as they slept and according to Lancel the Northmen feasted on their flesh after the slaughter. Joffrey asks if she has anything to say. Sir Dantos tells him that she is shocked witless. Joffrey then brings up that her dire wolf savaged him, and Sansa retorts that it was Arya's wolf Nymeria, and that he killed Lady even though she never hurt him. Joffrey replies that it was Eddard Stark that killed Lady, and he killed him. Joffrey then recounts how he shot a man in the throat, and he would shoot her also, but Cersei says they will kill Jaime. He then commands the Hound to hit Sansa, but Sir Dantos intervenes by whacking her over the head with his morning star, a melon on the end of a stick. People are laughing, but despite Sansa's prayers, Joffrey does not. Instead, he calls to his king's guard, telling them to save her face. Sir Merrin Trant flings Dantos down, while Sir Boris first slams a fist into Sansa's belly and then starts to lay the flat of his blade across her thighs. The Hound rasps enough, but the King orders Boris to make her naked and he tears the silk off her bodice away, exposing her breasts. She can hear sniggers as Joffrey orders her beat bloody. At that point, a voice demands, what is the meaning of this? Sansa looks to see the arrival of a furious Tyrion Lannister, flanked by his sellsword and one of his tribesmen, who demands Blunt tell him what sort of knight beats helpless maids. Sir Boris replies, one that serves his king, drawing his sword, with Sir Merin stepping beside him. Brom warns them to be careful, as they don't want to get blood all over their white cloaks. Tyrion asks for someone to give Sansa something to cover herself with, and the Hound tosses her his cloak. Tyrion then asks Joffrey whether he has no regard for her honour, considering that she is to be his queen one day. Joffrey replies that he is punishing her, for having the blood of the wolf, and Tyrion replies that Joffrey has the wits of a goose. Joffrey insists that the king can do as he likes, and Tyrion asks if he knows what happened to Aerys Targaryen, who also did what he liked. Sir Boris warns Tyrion that no one is to threaten the king, but Tyrion responds he is only educating him, and then tells Brom and Timit to kill Sir Boris if he opens his mouth again. When Sir Boris, turning red, states the Queen will hear of this, Tyrion asks if they should send for Cersei. When Joffrey has nothing to say, Tyrion tells him to learn to use his ears more and his mouth less, lest his reign be shorter than Tyrion himself. He points out that brutality will not win his people's love, nor his Queen's. Joffrey replies that Cersei taught him to value fear over love, and Sansa fears him. Tyrion only notes that it is a pity Stannis and Renly are not also twelve-year-old girls. Tyrion then continues by ordering Bronn and Timit to bring Sansa. They take her to the Tower of the Hand. She is shaking and moving as if she was in a dream. Serving girls clean her up and Maester Franken treats her wounds. 
Sansa thinks how the Hound hated knights, and now she also hates them, and she does not believe that they are true knights, and she goes to sleep. She wakes that night, and her legs pain her when she gets up. Outside her door she finds a woman whom she tells she wants to go to the Godswood. She wants to find Sir Dantos and beg him to take her home before it is too late. The woman tells her that Tyrion said she was not to leave. When food comes in the morning she tells the servant to take it away, and later Tyrion arrives and tells her that she is a guest, not a prisoner. Tyrion then tells the story of Rob's victory. Sir Stafford's host was encamped outside Oxcross. He explains that there were no army of wargs or sorcery involved, as Sir Lancel had claimed, as Lancel wouldn't know a warg from a wart, according to Tyrion. Sorcery is the source men spoon over failure to hide the flavour of their own incompetence. Rob's soldiers crept into the camp and cut the horse lines, and then Rob sent his direwolf among them, causing a stampede. The panicked horses trampled the camp, killing many. Most of the rest fled in terror, casting aside their weapons. Among the dead are Sir Stafford, killed by Lord Rickard Carstark, Sir Rupert Brax, Sir Lyman Vickery, Lord Craighall, and Lord Antario Jast. Fifty have been taken prisoner, including Jast's sons and Martin Lannister. The incompetent Sir Stafford had not even bothered to post sentries, thinking himself safe and secure in the Westerlands, and most of his army were raw recruits, the sweepings of Lannisport. The only mystery is how Rob reached Oxcross since Lannister forces hold the Golden Tooth, and the men stationed there swear Rob didn't pass him. Tyrion ultimately declares it unimportant. Rob Stark is his father's problem, while Joffrey is his. Tyrion then asks Sansa how she feels about his nephew, and she responds that she loves him with all her heart, more than ever. Tyrion is amused, and tells her someone taught her to lie well, which she may be grateful for one day. He then asks if she has flowered, to which she answers no. He says that that is good, and that he does not intend for her to marry Joffrey, since there will never be a reconciliation between the Lannisters and the Starks with the way Joffrey has acted, calling it a pity, as the marriage was one of Robert Baratheon's better notions. Sansa is concerned that this is a trick, and states that she only wants to be loyal. Tyrion adds, and far from any Lannisters, but admits he cannot blame her, as when he was her age, he wanted the same thing. He then notes that she visits the Godswood every day and asks what she prays for. Sansa prays for Rob's victory and Joffrey's death, but claims she prays for an end to the fighting. Tyrion tells her there will be another battle between Rob and Tywin, and that will settle the issue, warning her not to think that Oxcross was significant, and to pray that her brother bends his knee, and he will return her to Winterfell once there is peace. He offers to have some of his clansmen guard her, maybe Chella, if she prefers a woman. Sansa, thinking about Sir Dantos rescuing her, tells him that the wildlings frighten her. He responds that they also frighten Joffrey, and the lickspittles and sycophants who make up his king's guard, so no one would harm her. When she tells him she would prefer sleeping in her own bed, and the tower is where her father's men were slain, and the ghosts give her bad dreams, he agrees to have her escorted back to her bedchamber. The Iron Throne is mine by right, 